There's not a lot of dogs in the history of this year planet sure. that have ever accomplished something as magical as the man that's joining us right now. We just told the tale about what took place the last time he played Monday night. Now we're celebrating the shit out of him getting his first ever pick in a blowout of the Jacksonville Jaguars. Ladies and gentlemen, starting safety for the Buffalo Bills, DeMar Hamlin. Yeah. How are you, man? Pat Mac, what up, bro? Dude, thank you for joining us. Congratulations last night. Hey, bro, bro oh, yeah. congratulations last night, dude. Yeah. Well, I'm incredibly happy for you, pumped for you, <laughs> proud of you. What was last night? Thank what was you, going bro. through your mind as it was all happening? And then after the game, thinking about it all, what was going through your head? Uh, Man, in the, in the midst of the play, um, I was just, you know, trying to get my depth and just, you know, got a good read on quarterback eyes on where he was trying to go, you know. So I broke and, you know, I got me one. You know, they say tips and overthrows, we need those. So, uh, you know, I, I got me one. So it felt good to get that, that first one. And then, um, and then after the game, you're th you do you watch the highlight a few times, as you should. By the way, let's make sure we see that. Because you had pretty good vision, too. If you would have got to the wall, maybe, mm -hmm. we're taking that thing uh -huh. to the crib. You know, we're, we got a house go. I should have kept straight. Oh, you I should have kept straight. Yeah, yeah. I should have kept you're straight. Yeah. Spacing but, on. you know, go ahead. hindsight 2020, hindsight 2020. But, you know, once you get that first one in your hand, you know, I really – I, I wasn't really too worried about what happened after that. I was just happy to get my first one. Kept the ball smart. I didn't I didn't see the ball ever leave the hand. That's very you know, some people get too excited, they throw that thing, they yep. spike that thing. Mm -hmm. It's like, nah, don't need to show hey with Tawny 50 50 situation, you know, with the ball. Yeah, in I, I meant to go take the ball to my mom. I told my mom uh, before the game, if I get a pick, I'm gonna I'm gonna take the ball to her. I was just so tired after the play. <laughs> I went. I went and sat down. <laughs> but, she understands. But she, going, but she getting that ball though for sure. She okay. Okay. She understands, and I think she was probably so excited too. She didn't remember the promise that you did not keep in the moment at the time. <laughs> Let's talk after the game though, with mom, with family, with a lot of people. I assume there was. Uh, you said hindsight's twenty twenty. I assume there was a look back, or are we past that now at this point? We have played too much football. We're moving along. Are you still thinking about the entire journey from the last time you played Monday night? Yeah, for sure. You know, it's always going to be there, um, especially, uh, you know, I it's especially with my family, you know, in my unit, because that's our life. You know, we experienced it. And um, just being so close to the game, you know, still playing, um, it's just our reality. Um, so it's always a reflection. But, you know, we just so growth mindset it and, you know, always trying to progress forward that, um, you know, we just just keep just keep keeping on, keeping on and keep rolling with the punches. You know, we just blessed to be where we are at this point. So um, it's always a reflection, but, you know, we just blessed to be where we are in the moment right now. That's awesome. I could imagine a perspective changer for everybody around you. You've changed our perspective mm -hmm. on things, especially getting oh, yeah. back into it. Right. We talked earlier about, like, the mental aspect of getting back on a football field. Was that something whenever you were getting back out there? And does that ever – do you, like – we saw Tua get injured, or we see these other injuries happen. Like, is there anything that like sparks any any fear from you whenever you're playing football now? And and how was the process getting back in? Uh, you know, I just want to commend you know everybody that is a part of this organization, the Buffalo Bills. Last season, they truly like gave me my space to do whatever I needed, um, as far as like falling back in love with the game, you know, getting back comfortable with everything, and you know, I had my time to process every single emotion that I had. And, um, you know, I had great teammates around me, great leadership. Um, uh, last year, you know, big shout out to you know, Michael Hyde, Jordan Poyer, um, everybody who was a part of, you know, our team last year, Diggs, um, you know, they were big on just like, whether directly or indirectly, um, just being able to like, keep pushing me to keep, to keep going, just the encouragement, the checking on me, the check-ins, um, you know, it, it meant a lot. and. Um, it made me want to stay close to this team and this environment. And uh, just throughout the process of the whole year, I was able to, like, you know, put everything aside. Um, and then on top of that, man, my, my training staff, like, you know, um, I'm just able to be free going out there. So, you know, I'm just glad to be back in a good mindset and a good headspace um, moving forward. Sports are amazing. Teammates are the greatest. I mean, what you just said there like, gave me chills while you were talking about it there because that's like the greatness of having a team and a community around you. And I think your story obviously showcased all those people. The training staff I got to meet last year, just them executing everything when the, when the lights were on is obviously a massive part of the entire story. And it's like uh, them still being by your side today is sweet. I almost got emotional just thinking about how you have to feel. Let's talk ball. Let's talk a little ball here.
Okay, you're starting safety for the Buffalo Bills. You talked about Jordan Poyer and Hyde. This team is in the next chapter of who the Buffalo Bills are with Josh Allen as the quarterback. However, vibes around the team. It seems like you guys are having a great time playing football together. We are. Like, we really are. And, and that's all we keep it. You know, we keep it simple. And everybody's keeping the team first. And um, I'll say, man, Buffalo is a, it's a special place to be. And, you know, the vets always have told me that from day one of me walking into this building. You know, people that have been around the league and been to other teams and organizations, they've always told me, like, other places aren't like this. You know, you don't get the things that you get here everywhere, you know, as far as the communication from top to bottom, the facilities, um, how players are treated, you know, the coaching, um, just everything from top to bottom. You know, they tell you that this is a world-class place. And, um, you know, they've, uh, they've always told me to cherish it. So, you know, I'm just reaping the benefits of, you know, the advice that they've gave me. And, um, you know, it's, it's, it's just showing, you know, this place is special. And uh, we're, we're all as one right now. And we just going to keep the, keep growing. Bill's Mafia last night was impressive, too. Yeah. I mean, they were going absolutely bananas. They always they do the pregame thing? What's that? You're talking about the ketchup and mustard to their face? Or the, the hey, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, yeah, do they always do that? They go crazy. Yeah, they go crazy. You, you never know what you're going to get from Bill's Mafia, but. They're going to show up every time, you know, like last last night, every third down, it was so loud. I had to put my earpiece of my of my helmet on, you know, our our um, our mics face mask just to hear the call. You know what I mean? So it was so loud. Um, but, you know, that's that's like our talk, man, you know, just being able to get the fans involved early. Um, you know, it truly makes a difference. Yes, whenever that wagon gets wagoning, yeah. Yeah. Uh, it becomes a problem. And Trevor Lawrence is the most recent victim. Uh, oh Jacksonville Jaguars. It was a big one on Monday Night Football. D. Butch got a question for you, Demar. Yeah, you play uh, your best football now. You've started and, and played a bunch of games early on in your career as well. But obviously, since the incident, you got you got a new newfound fame. You know, a lot of people you can't just walk around. People don't know who you are. That's not the really experience for a lot of players, especially DBs, not quarterbacks. How you, how has it been? I guess managing. Uh, that part of it and still been able to focus on the main thing, which is uh, football? Uh, you know, it's, it's been a little easy, uh, I would say, um, not to take it for granted at all. But, uh, you know, football has always been the main thing to me. Um, it's always been my passion and it's always like, it's always been what's made me a better person in all areas of my life, you know, just being dedicated to the game. You know, uh, I was just telling somebody the other day, like, you know, football is the reason why I, um, as close to God as I am, you know what I mean? Football makes me clean up my life um, in so many other areas, you know, it makes me want to be better on and off the field, you know, because that's how you get the best results. So, um, you know, just knowing that, um, it allows me to, like, keep the main thing the main thing because, honestly, like, being locked in with the game, it truly cleans up my entire life. So, um, you know, that's why I'm so appreciative of this sport, of the game, and, you know, that's why it was a no-brainer that, you know, I, I wanted to be right back in this position I am now. Damar, you're the man. We're incredibly proud that you're from the city you're from, too. AP Tone has a question for you. Yeah, Damar, also from Pittsburgh. Uh, not from McKee's Rocks. I I used to venture to McKee's Rocks late night every once there in a while. There was an adult ballet yeah. over there. Oh! Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. 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 <laughs> what was going over there? <laughs> yeah, you know. Yeah, we saw you there. Yeah. Classy you joint. Me. Yeah. Yeah, we you did. Me there. Yeah, <laughs> we did. <laughs> uh, no, we were saying, like, we're not surprised by where you come from, how you overcame everything, because you were obviously baptized in the Mon and the Allegheny, uh, went to Pitt. Uh, whenever you're going to come back home, come back to Steelers, that's fine with us. But, it, but does that help, like, playing in a blue-collar city, coming from a blue-collar city, just, just dealing with all this stuff, you think? Yeah, um, it, it keeps me grounded, you know what I mean? Like, I can't, I can't go and act like somebody that, I never once was because, you know, not only will my family hold me accountable, but, you know, all the people I grew up around in um, my city will hold me accountable as well um, to truly always be myself. Uh, and uh, I take pride in that, you know what I mean? I take pride in, you know, going in any room I'm in and representing uh, where I come from. So, you know, that, that allows me to always have that chip on my shoulder. And then, you know, Buffalo and Pittsburgh, just as far as blue collar town, they got so many similarities. Um, so that's one of the first things I realized getting up here. There's so many similarities in the people, um, the fans, you know, how much they love uh, the game and then how much people like really look after one another. 
We're proud you're a Yenzer, pal. Mm -hmm. And I think Buffalonians are proud of your Buffalo Bill. We can't wait to watch you to continue to crush your football career and help society out. This thing you're doing with the NFL is sweet. These AEDs for uh, youth programs and youth sports, you're making the world better, brother. Uh, if that was one of them, that, that's what we're talking about. <laughs> if not, you're the man. Thank you so much for your time, brother. Hey, Pat Mack, what about that backyard bro? All right. <laughs> Late, we're running out of time. Hard out coming up. We're up 10, dude. Three minutes left. We're up. Yikes. That's not how that's supposed to go, Damar. That's not how that's supposed to go. Okay. Hey, we got it done. We got it done. Yeah. Hell to pit. All right, ladies and gentlemen, Damar Hamlin. Thank you. Yeah, Thanks for coming on, Damar. So happy. Love, love you, bro. Yeah, you, know you too, it. man. Yeah, we love you too, man. Have a good one. Proud of you, man. That graphic, man. Once man. that panther was on that bridge, I knew it was. Yeah, the dong. Yeah, so, yeah when that yeah. dong was sliding in one side of the mountaineers, yeah. they'll give it a little look. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you couldn't see the mountaineers, dong. He was in it, too. <laughs> That's the problem. From, Pitt came from behind That's twice that week. Oh, I thought because the panthers. Now, across that bridge, you'd still be able to see it.